Hello there, welcome to our new series on Computer Organization and Design. This is a new core engineering subject which has been used uh, by various computer science uh, students to get to know about that how a particular digital system is designed and then structured together to do a certain kind of uh, processing of data. So in this particular video, we are going to actually talk about very briefly on following uh, four things. One is that how digital information representation and its usage is done. Uh, then basic structure of a uh, simple digital computer then we are going to you know look around at what is an architecture organization and design of a com uh, digital computer and then at last we will be comparing two very common architectures that is von Neumann and Howard and they have a specific uh, you know functionality to do now let's start with the basic of the digital computer a digital computer system uses the binary number system which has only two digits now when I say two digits, this is zero and one. They are only two. And when when they are assembled in individually, they are actually named as bit. So this is basically a unit for the representation of a particular information within a computer system, right? So which which ha which can be either zero or which can be either one. So you actually use a group of bits to represent certain information. And mind it, the count of bits used to represent the data is defined in terms of power of two which is raised to power some n where n is either equals to zero or greater than zero right it's ne never a negative value now these group of bits can represent discrete symbols such as decimal letters or uh, digits letters of alphabets and so on it depends upon that what sort of information you want to depict for an, a particular application now let's take an example Let's say we have a group of bits in digital computer system that are used to represent many different format and that particular value is this. Now if you see it's a 8 bit number right so each num each particular bit has an option to put 0 and 1 so here if you see we have 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 right so if we talk about the unsigned decimal number it is representing 67. Now how do we know it is 67 so we actually need to do some calculation here so I'm just writing down, down this number so that we can do certain calculation and you know uh, give you some gist of that how a digital uh, uh, system you know, can you know actually depict a particular value right so now as we know we are uh, we have a binary number here and we wanted to convert it and we wanted to convert it into a decimal number right which is unsigned so that means we are not considering this most significant bit as a signed bit it's not a signed bit we are considering it as a part of data so what we generally do is if, if we go with the uh, general equation form so this is this starts from 2 raised to power 0 that is 0 index value 1 2 raised to power 1 2 raised to power 2 2 raised to power 3 2 raised to power 4 2 raised to power 5 2 raised to power 6 and 2 raised to power 7 and uh, finally when we wanted to uh, get our decimal number what exactly we do is we say that 0 that is this value mu multiply by 2 raised to power 7 plus 1 multiplied by 2 raised to power 6 plus 0 into 2 raised to power 5 plus 2 uh, sorry 0 multiplied by 2 raised to power 4 plus 0 into 2 raised to power 3 plus 0 into 2 raised to power 2 plus 1 into 2 raised to power 1 and plus 1 into 2 raised to power 0 so if we go and check now this value will becomes what this will be 0 plus 64 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1 which is equivalent to 67 so this is how we actually find out the unsigned decimal number from this one particular number now on the other hand when you say that the format used is the bcd now bcd says that we have uh, we have a combination of four bit numbers right so it starts from some zero 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 then it goes to zero zero one so, so we keep on adding one uh, binary one to uh, each previous value so we get zero one zero so another value that we have is zero zero one one then we have zero one zero zero then we have zero one zero one then we have zero one one zero and so on right so this represents 0 this represents 1 uh, this represents 2 this represents 3 4 5 right and 
then we have 6. So if we try to compare, as we are saying that BCD is actually working on 4 bits, so what we have to do is we have to actually divide this 8 bit number that is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 into 2 pairs of 4 bits, right? So this is the first pair and this is the second pair and we start from the right hand side. So when you try to match this value here, it is actually depicting 3 for BCD, whereas if you talk about this, 1001010100 this is actually 4 so finally what we get is 40 uh, 43 as a number right so this is how you actually represent whereas if, if if you see here the letter c is represented now when i'm using sky codes in that that particular scenario the 67 is actually resembling capital c letter if you want to confirm it you can you know go and check with the uh, uh, a sky table right so this is therefore purely dependent the representation of bits is purely dependent on the operation which is in uh, in processing and what sort of data we are actually looking at right so that is what what exactly it depends upon so for more information you can actually go and refer to uh, the book uh, which is by the author Morris Plano and the book name is computer Ar architecture um, uh, computer system architecture right that is the name of the book that you can refer to so let's let's get started with the another part that is the digital computer so whenever you talk about the digital computer it actually consists of two different things known as the hardware and another one is the software so when you talk about the hardware hardware is actually comprising up of uh, electronic components and electromechanical devices both set of components are purposed are purposefully connected to produce a set of relevant operation results Whereas the software, which is actually a driving entity for that particular hardware, is a collection of various set of instructions and data that the computer hardware manipulates to perform various types of data processing tasks. This is very important to understand. So when when we when we are talking about the digital computer, there this is the basic model which we get. Uh, every digital computer will at least consist up of a central processing unit, which is uh, further containing two different units one is arithmetic and logical unit and one second one is the control unit apart from that it is connected with a memory that is uh, some kind of primary memory which is no normally known by the name of random access memory then it is also connected with the input devices and the output devices so input devices can be your keyboard right it can be some kind of mouse OCRs and so on similarly output devices can be monitor can be a uh, printer and so on right so input or and output processor is actually responsible for taking the input from the device uh, input device and then uh, uh, sending it for to the central processing unit for further uh, uh, processing of the task and uh, once once uh, it is done uh, it is moved towards the uh, output device for display purpose so this is what exactly we have and uh, again, I'm reminding you that this particular CPU central processing unit is actually consisting of two things. One is the ALU and second one is the control unit. Control unit, the basic job of the control unit is to send the control signals to all the different devices which are connected with, within the uh, central processing unit range, right? So that is what we have. An arithmetic and logical unit is basically responsible for doing all the arithmetic operations as well as the logical operations which are supposed to be done on the binary data. So I'm saying it's working on only binary data, right? The information representation that we talked about here is only for the purpose of the user readability, right? Whereas digital computer purely works on a binary data, right? Either you talk about the control signals or arithmetic and logical operation. Now moving on to the next part of uh, the, the digital computer, you will generally heard of three terms. One is the computer architecture, one is the computer organization and computer design. They all are correlated to each other. So let's start with the computer architecture. It actually concerns with the structure and behavior of the computer as seen by the user and includes the information, that means data, formats, that means the format in which that data is supposed to be represented as we have already discussed about the unsigned decimal number, BCD numbers or letters and so on. Instruction sets which are actually supposed to uh, you know, uh, run as a program on your hardware and the techniques for addressing memory. Because we are talking about a data uh, here, the information which is supposed to be stored somewhere. So for that, some kind of addressing mechanism is also required. So this is one of the most important thing that is computer architecture defines the structure and behavior. And when you talk about the structure, it actually concerns with the specification of various functional modules, 
like processor and memories and structuring them together into the computer system and this defines that what sort of uh, computer system we are going to use and this this is uh, uh, the line where you define that is it as a server computer is it a general purpose computer or is it a specific uh, system which is uh, there for a specific application right so this is how you define now when you talk about the computer organization it's more about the structure so it is concerned with the very hardware components are together to form a digital computer system and whereas the computer design is something which is generally used by the computer uh, computer designers and uh, it is basically concerned with the development of hardware for the digital computer taking into consideration a given set of specification now this is very important the set of specification we corresponding to that we actually design our computer system right so that is what what i say when you structure them you actually define that are they the server systems or they some kind of dsps or they, are there some kind of general purpose computers or laptops and so on so these set of specification actually define that what what sort of device we are going to you know develop or manufacture and then what sort of application and can run on it right and the instruction set which actually gets out is all after you know setting up this particular part so this is what you need to you know remember and these three terms are very important if you know all these three terms you will be able to you know differentiate uh, on on the various kind of specifications that a computer system comes with as we uh, know that there are there are certain specifications so what sort of specifications are there and on the basis of these specification we actually go and define the architecture of the system that's the important part so here we have two different architectures which are listed one is the von neumann architecture which is very popular which is a stored program kind of uh, you know, specification system whereas, whereas another one is the hardware architecture so if you look very carefully the von neumann is the same what we discussed in our this particular slide right so the only thing which i added here is that the random access memory contains both data as well as code right so it's a shared memory a very important you know thing shared memory model is used here whereas if we talk about the hardware architecture we have actually two different memories here one for the program and another for the data and mind it these two memories can have different size so let's say this is 64k this can be a 32k memory right so this is how you can actually you know differentiate this is one of the most important and major differentiation between both these architectures another is the shared channel is used by the central processing unit for read and write whereas within harvard architecture individual lines are used for both the memories and uh, the system can read and write at the same point of time so the both the memories have read and write as a different channels uh, which are connected to the central processing unit right so this is what uh, what exactly is the you know difference on the basis of block diagram which you which you can actually you know visually differ differentiate now let's go further and talk about uh, the other differences so as i mentioned that in von neumann architecture program and data are stored in the same memory whereas in harvard it is the program and data are stored in separate memory also both memories can be of different sizes important one in von neumann architecture shared channel to access memory for program and data whereas in harvard architecture it's a dedicated channel to access memory for program and data individually for von neumann architecture the code is executed serially and takes more clock pulses obviously we are using a shared channel whereas in harvard architecture the code can be executed parallelly and uh, lesser clock pulses can be used for that now in von neumann architecture control unit is very simple because there is only one single control bus is there so it's easy to manage and easy to you know uh, fabricate with whereas in hard harvard architecture uh, two separate control buses are required because we are using two different memories and apart from that design wise it, it's quite complicated as, as well as it's expensive when you are fabricating a particular system in von neumann architecture if you see the conventional processors are found where pc and servers are the basic example for this whereas for harvard the use of dsp uh, right digital signal processing microcontrollers are there processors for embedded system like mobile phones and pdas and so on so this is what the application part is so you can actually resemble that uh, what what exactly hardware uh, harvard architecture is used for so whereas von neumann is for the other purpose so wherever you find the general uh, purpose computing you will find a von neumann architecture whereas uh, for specific kind of application you will find the harvard architecture so just summarizing this particular uh, video the digital computers uh, computers works with binary information which can be used to represent variety of data 
this new computer consists up of various electrical as well as electromechanical components which are structured in a specific way for an application there are two digital computer architecture available von neumann and harvard architecture each of them have their own pros and cons von neumann is applicable on general purpose computing system like pc laptops etc harvard is harvard architecture is applicable on computing system which are built for some specific application like digital processing system microcontrollers etc so i hope uh, this particular video give uh, give you certain basic understanding about the computer organization and design so thank you very much for watching keep tuned for the other videos